Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the YKTR Sports Show, Grand Final Edition, brought to you in the Body Science Content Studio as always. Get your BC products from Coles or online. Joined, he's back, Skipper Scope, still down and out, um, but Rugby League Guru, welcome back and happy birthday. Thank you, mate. Appreciate it. Hopefully I'm better uh, second up, just quietly. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, wasn't our best week. Yeah, we were... I've never been more confident that Melbourne were going to win. We rolled into weaknesses and we're like, they got none. And they ended up losing. Mate, I didn't have a single conversation last week with anyone that included Penrith Panthers in the grand final. So, egg all over my face, mate. A really incredible performance by them. Yeah, it was crazy performance and boys just got after it. Jacko, what's going on, bro? What's up, man? I'd just like to point out that I've been on Penrith from the jump. But anyway, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, no, nah, yeah, it's a good weekend. Can you guys hear me sweet there? Yeah, we got you. Yeah. Oh, I don't know why my headphones are being weird. Um, yeah, good weekend of footy, man. Um, got a, two teams in the grand final that we probably didn't pick, but... It's going to be interesting anyway. Um, today's show, should we rip straight in? You guys yeah. ready to roll? Ready it's to roll, Guru? Straight, straight through, bro. Well, I, you've, it's interesting you touch on that from the jump, Guru, because I've got accountability Wednesdays down here. Um, I want you boys to own this, where we were wrong. Oh, I'll wear it. <laughs> I'll wear it. Uh, we'll start with you then, Ice. Uh, the games themselves, we won't dive too deep in. Obviously, it's Wednesday. We want to talk about the GF, but what did you make of the footy over the weekend, and where were you wrong, man? Oh, it's just football, isn't it, sometimes? Sometimes you just get these, and you've got to turn up on the right day. Melbourne Storm was the best side all year. Um, I honestly did not see it coming, and also dived big into my bet that I thought this was just going to come through. So, um, yeah, was feeling myself a little bit, got smacked in the face, was wrong, and, yeah, I'd happily wear it. Guru? Yeah, I got an egg all over my face, mate. I got nowhere near the mark on that game. For me, when I was watching it, that Penrith Panthers side, they remind me of the old Cronulla Sharks side when they mm. used to go to Melbourne and just show them no respect. When Tavita Pangai Jr. went up to Christian Welsh, I mean, Christian Welsh could trip over my mum and I wouldn't get upset at him, you know. Mm. He just went at him. They just showed them no respect, and it set the tone. Very early, um, yeah. You got to you, you take your licks. What do you What do you think of Melbourne? Like, they name, hardly ever do performances like that. Maybe last time I remember was maybe Warriors when they got him. Oh eight or nah eleven. Eleven. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's yeah. funny. I, I was listening to Matty Johns on his podcast. He had Cooper Cronk on the other day, and the last thing he said to him was, "Melbourne, they look red hot some years, and then all of a sudden they lose a game, and you can't explain it. Mm. Like, what do you put that down to?" And Cooper Cronk, he was dumbfounded, and he brought up that game as well. He just said, "Oh, yeah, I don't know." Like. I reckon Craig Bellamy would have just been staring at his ceiling the other night going, what on earth just happened here? Like They probably felt a bit like that after that Parramatta game too when they were on the hot streak and no one, everyone thought they were going to win those 20 games and they just didn't turn up and para beat them. Like, it's weird that they've got that performance in them because just they're not a club synonymous with it, that. It obviously doesn't help when you lose Cheese and Christian Welsh. Yeah, of course. Um, but like they, they had... Dropped they had plenty of ball too. Eh? Dropped heaps of ball. And, jeez, oh, everyone's messaged me this week saying Storm played poorly. Mate, Penrith went at them. Yeah. I thought Penrith, they're not getting enough credit for what they did on the weekend. Melbourne don't just get off the bus and play bad. It came down to a lot of the pressure put on by Penrith, in my opinion. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just lost for words. Like <laughs> I've watched the game back and watched the highlights. So I'm just going, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Mate, the one thing, uh, and uh, you know, we, we spoke about it last week. I said it but couldn't convince myself. Is Cameron Smith the difference? Yeah. Is it a big game where they needed the biggest big game player of all time? And Yeah, it'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of went against them last week, but yeah, no, nah, like you said, yeah, need, need those cool heads, and obviously they've got some hot heads in there as well. Yeah. Like um, Munster's like high energy, um, Cheese is high energy. And they're usually your best players as well. They contribute to the most points. So here's yeah, one of those games, huh? Speaking of goats, Tommy Tabrovich takes out the Dalian medal. We'll do a little bit of Dalian chat here. We'll start with you, Guru. What did you make kind of of the awards overall, and then our supreme winner, Tommy Turbo? Did you see that one coming? Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> I think Blind Freddy could have seen Turbo <laughs> Dally M coming. I still don't understand why we did it over two nights, but... Um, did yeah. anyone watch the first night or no? No. Nah. Uh, <laughs> I didn't watch any night, to be honest. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I watched the second night. Um, Turbo, obviously, best player in the competition this year. I was looking through some stats, and he, he won that Dally M with 35 Dally M points from 15 games, right? The the highest record for most Dally M points in a season is Thurston in 07. He mm. played 22 games. He, and he had 36 points. So if you if you average it out, you know, Dally M points per game, Turbo was running at 2.3 Dally M points per game. Wow. If he played 22 games the same as Thurston did, he would have finished on 50 Dally M points. <laughs> 50. The record is 36. Wow. Yeah, I don't know. It's one of those years um, you could sort of appreciate. It. I think it's the year. Yeah, you just, yeah, eye, just eyeballing it. You're just like, oh, he's just so much better than... We were, we were saying Hainsey and Barber, he, he's... Mate, Way has better, he, wasn't has he? he jumped the queue? Like, uh, I mean, obviously, Haynes and Barber went to a grand final. 
Turbo's gone one and two in finals. Where do you where do you sit this uh, season now? Individually, you just go, yeah, this, that was probably yeah. one of the best performances I've ever seen. Uh, be interesting how he goes next year. Very interesting. I'd be buying him a floor mat for that bathroom. That's for sure. <laughs> 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 All right, and I, another year without fans. Before we, we like to do three big things before we rip into the GF sort of preview. Another year without fans. You sort of mentioned it yesterday. Kind of giving you a new appreciation for the live experience of games. Or oh, yes and no. Like you want to go watch a live game again. And but then obviously the way Sydney's set up, it's not the best to go watch football. Like you're a South Sydney fan, but you have to drive forty minutes to Homebush and then fucking get out of the out of the joint, which is torture. Um, yeah, like I think I'll go watch a lot more games just because we haven't been in there. But obviously, once reality goes back to normal, probably just sitting at the pub. To be honest. Yeah, I've been a member at the. Well, my, my old man's been an SFS member all of his life, so I've always gone there, but. Mate, outside of going to the FS, SFS, I don't think I'd drive anywhere in Sydney. No. Nah. Go and watch football. It's, it's, it's not a set up well, is it? No, nah, it's a nightmare. It's And, you know, you get that train out to Homebush. It, it takes you an hour and a half to get home. <laughs> you spend longer on a train than you do at the footy. Like, yeah. And then, yeah, you know, you obviously have to whack out 15 bucks for a pint of Coke. And <laughs> TV, it's all done so well on there with KO and Fox League now. It's, mm, it's I agree. easy to stay at a pub. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, the television product's gotten so good, it's hard to... Oh, the Roosters' new stadium would be ready next year, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. Be yeah, SFS. Yeah. Wow, that'd be cool. I'll yeah. be I'll be at that. Yeah, Especially maybe Anzac Day or something like that. I'll go to one of those sort of events. Um, that's set up. That's in a good spot. Like, you can go to the city, you can go to eastern suburbs, you can go to any pub, and it's not too far to get there. So I think one that once that comes back, there should be more football games played that way, you would think? Yeah, I hope so. I, and the thing about the SFS, it was always my favourite stadium. There wasn't a bad seat at the SFS. Nah, it's close. Oh, you go out to Allianz, they're all shit seats. You are <laughs> so far away. And, you know, the Roosters, they're, they're not playing at the SFS. They were playing at the SCG, which, you know, I've, I've got a membership to. But you can't see anything when you're there. You're mm. a mile away from the game. So I can't wait for it to get back to SFS. Have um, you been to Paris Stadium? I was just about to say Bankwest. Well, That's cool. I think That's it's called cool. Combank now. Uh, yeah. yeah, unreal stadium. I love that one. I, I went there for the nines last year. I was one of the 25 people that was there, but it was unreal. <laughs> Great little stadium. <laughs> yeah, it's just like that. Like, you yeah, know, it's gone. It's, it's like a wall. So yeah. uh, we're getting some better stadiums, better fan experiences. So it'd be cool. But I don't think it was shit about Sydney's to set up. Like Melbourne's set up perfectly. Perfect. Oh, trams in, buses in, walk in, pubs all around. I do like the early kickoffs that they have in AFL as well. You know, have that sort of 12 and like two is like a late game. Go get blind early, have dinner, cruise home. Yeah. That'd be the goal. That's a bit of you. And beer by eight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Guru, we have to talk about the Phantom because uh, it's been... It's become a viral sensation. Talk to us a little bit about the phantom of uh, South Sydney, man. Yeah, obviously, I, I live in the South Sydney. I'm not a South Sydney fan myself, but uh, there's Vincent been a... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> King of the fence, boys. Uh, there's been a... It started in 2014. I actually had him on my podcast the other day, and he, he woke up, you know, the day after they won their prelim final against the Chooks, decided he wanted to do something. Went to Bunnings, got a giant stencil. It's like bigger than this table. And he just drove around South Sydney in the middle of the night painting rabbits outside known Rabbitohs fans' houses. Oh, that's cool. Oh, it's mad, He's not man. just whacking them on any house. No, he's going – it's it's targeted. And then this year uh, he put it on one of those, like, community groups for yeah. mascot botany. He got 600 requests. So uh, for the last four nights, him and his family have been driving around in the middle of the night so they don't get arrested, essentially, yeah. putting these bunnies all over South Sydney. Um, it's And he inv- you know, he came on my podcast and he invited me to go with him last night. And, yeah. mate, seeing the families run out onto the streets, you know, you drive down the street and there's curtains opening and people running out. It's the Phantom, it's the Phantom, people <laughs> coming out. It was unreal, man. It's just... Just brings it's what rugby league does best. Brings the whole community together. It Especially was, this area, doesn't it? Oh, mate, it's South Sydney around, yeah. is through and through. Like people can bag them all they want. Mate, this this is rugby league, mm, heartland okay. South Sydney. Yeah, I love it. All right, let's rip into a bit of grand final chat. We'll start with you then, mate. Uh, we've gone with the same sort of setup as last time. We've added a few little uh, tricks to this one. Narrative, your favourite narrative going into this game, Guru. Mate, you, you, you gave me a heads up during the week. Favourite narrative. I reckon I wrote down fifteen of my yeah, favourite narratives. Right. It was, day. I think Benji. Has to be top gong for me. Um, Over Adam Reynolds? Oh, mate, at least Adam Reynolds... He's yeah, playing next year. He's playing next year. Benji, there's that mystery whether he will or not. Um, yeah, I, I, I think this will be his last game. Obviously, he's a guy that's done so much in our game. It's 307 games since his last grand final. Shit. 307. <laughs> that's a stat for you, isn't it? <laughs> there's like 25 dudes that have ever played 300-plus games. Yeah. And he's having that spell. He went to Union. He went to the Dragons, the Broncos. And when you're from New Zealand, he's so important to us. 
like I messaged him straight away. I was like, "Fuck, congrats, big bro." That type of stuff, and he goes, "Bro, thanks, man. Like, means the world to me." So man. didn't reply to my text. Funny, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, neither, bro. It's all good. Yeah, so it's just like, um, like he he he's our Joey, isn't he? Yeah, he's yeah. our. Is that the best way to put it? He, is he, he on top Joey. of Stacey? Yeah, I reckon he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, yeah. Okay, yeah. Like just because the way he played the game as well. Um, he's won a GF as well. He's won yep. a World Cup, so he's, he's got those things over Stacey as well. Like Stacey will always be cool, like little general, and obviously got to play off him, which was fucking sick. It's funny, Stacey's sort of more synonymous with the Warriors as a club, but Benji's like a New Zealand cult figure. Not like, everyone loves the Warriors in New Zealand. No, they? that's the thing. But everyone loves Benji. Who do you support? Like Bulldogs. So like, why? Oh, you're from Pepper <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So like, yeah. Hopefully, um, he wins. Yeah, yeah, I love that narrative. Yeah, Adam Reynolds obviously right up there. He's obviously the kid that came through. At Redfern, I remember watching him play Matto Sports. I mean, he is was South he good? Sydney. Yeah, him and um, not sure if you remember Benny Jones. You probably yeah, no, played Benny. Benny. Yeah, him and Benny were the halves, and they were unreal. He was a, he was a little bit younger, a little bit quicker. Adam back then had a really good running game to him as well. Still had the same kicking game. Mm. Still kicked in the exact same fashion. Yeah, um, just he, been South Sydney through and through. Right yeah, now. fuck crazy. For, oh, for me, I'm going a little bit different. I'm going the Ivan Cleary. Uh, narrative obviously a little bit closer to home for me because I went to a printer system where they were trying to rebuild and they were just getting a few of us knockabout guys yeah come through they will just get like a few of us knockabout book guys to come and, and plug the hole mm-hmm. while guys like Nathan and that come through so I love I love cycles and I've it's been inter- <laughs> thanks Jordy thanks Jordan. Um I love cycles and it's cool to see a project hopefully go from start to finish and that's what excites me that's what excites me about business having an idea and the execution and seeing it come through and, and seeing it play out and obviously got to play with Penrith don't support them now but I'd just love to see that narrative love to see Ivan and, and, and Nath come through as well must be hard coaching your son but then in saying that your son's an absolute weapon <laughs> be easier if the son's your best player I can imagine yeah, not like um, oh, John, Martin and John Lang yeah that? well they won a premiership together I know my dad coached me it would have been a Tough gig my for dad, him. My dad coached me as well. You could play though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's different. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think though what you talk about these kids coming through together, like it's it's a very similar narrative on both sides of the ball. You've it is. Got, it is genius. Yeah. Uh, the South Sydney, you got Blake Taff. He's a Larpa Junior. AJ's a Larpa Junior. Campbell Graham's a Wombat. Uh, Reynolds, I think he played for Alexandria. Like, there's a heap of guys in the South Sydney side that are proper South Sydney boys. Cam Murray's a mascot Jet. So is Colum and Tungy. Like, I've just named. You know, a third player. of their team, you know. Um, <laughs> their best players. Yeah, and it's crazy, you know, they won a comp seven years ago, built off local juniors as well, a heap of guys. So for them to rebuild and, you know, Adam Reynolds and AJ are the only local juniors that are still there from 14. They've brought through a new crop. It's is unreal. It, is it the cheapest way to do it, to win a comp? I think so. So it, I, I also reckon it's probably the hardest way to do it. Yeah. But it is the cheapest. Mm. Um, and, I mean... If, if that jersey genuinely means something to you as a child growing up, it's going to mean the world to you. Like, to, talking to Cullum and Tungy yesterday afternoon, he was, you know, he's a mascot junior. He was coached by Darren Brown. Like, he's South Sydney through and through, and it just means the world to him, you know. Like, if, um, if, if it was all along, would you be down at the new market watching the game or? Mate, I'm a little bit of a. Uh, I, I would probably watch the grand final at home. I like to really sit and watch it closely. If I if I end up with someone at the pub next to me who's talking complete and utter dribble, yeah, just ruins the event for me. Oh, but, really? uh, so yeah, I, I'd like to body. sit and watch it. Um, same as State of Origin, I always sit at home and watch it. Bit of a rugby league nerd like that. So. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the name, rugby league guru. I'm the same man. I got to be by myself for the big games. Can't have someone barking in your ear. It's probably different for you because you played footy, so you know what you're watching anyway, but I need to focus, man. <laughs> I can't be willy-nilly sink and piss while I'm watching. <laughs> I like being there. It's usually my favourite weekend, grand final mm-hmm. weekend, because it's a long weekend too, isn't it? Yeah. To, to be honest with you, I, I think of the last 20 grand finals, I've missed one of them. I, I'm always out there for it, uh, but if, I, if the pubs were open this weekend, I would still watch at home because I just <laughs> want to sit and take it all in. From the fence? <laughs> Definitely, mate. Definitely. <laughs> sitting on the fence outside your house, peeking through the window. Speaking of fence sitting, where are you going with your strengths here, Guru, in this one? Uh, Penrith, it has to be their defence. Um, I think they've they've conceded 28 points in three finals games. That's pretty good. They've only scored 28, to be fair, but they've conceded 28, which stands out for me there. Uh, but, yeah, their, their defence right up there. I think as well, last year's one of their strengths. Uh, they would have been hurting from that still. I've got the same as you. Last year, their loss, and you look at 99. Still in my takes now. <laughs> he does that, He man. does that. He does I've that. written this down right here. you, you got to pick one take. Nah, and like like we, we love narratives. Obviously, the 90-91 yeah. Panthers as well. Remember my guy talking about when, obviously, they played the same team. 
Um, but I don't think this experience will be as, as scary or as nerve wracking. And you've seen, I heard Joey talk about the Parramatta side in 01 and they rocked up to the grand final breakfasts. Remember those? And he remembers like seeing all the Parramatta boys and they seem nervous and the boys are rocking up, relaxed. I look at the Dally M's and you got Brian Toto sort of bumping around. Uh, I don't think they're scared of big occasions anymore. You got a couple of players that have played Origin, they've had a bit of adversity, they're coming back now. I think it's going to be a massive strength for them. Well, that Panther side, you know, like that, they had to come back and beat the, the Raiders in that grand final. Ivan's boys, they've beaten their Raiders. They beat them last week. Mm. Like, I, I wonder if. It's taken a bit out of the tank, but I said that last week, and I missed the mark by a country mile. So, do you reckon the youth on this side sort of helps, it helps him them. with that? Because a lot of people can say experience, but then you get beat up bodies. Um, man, they're young man. Uh, it's a young man's game at the moment. Like it is. I don't think it, the game's ever been suited to younger legs. Mm. Um, it's a bit like the NFL at the moment with your, you know, your, your running quarterbacks and everything being so successful. We're sort of going through that transition at the moment. So. I gave them no hope to be there, but I'm finding it really hard to tip them against them now. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking the same as you, Rabbitohs. Uh, Strangs obviously has to be that left side, uh, but uh, they were special. Way they were special, way. Eh? Yeah. Can you fucking? <laughs> oh, mate, I can't <laughs> read that. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I rewind that tape back. He's looking at my. The thing eyes there. are dark. Send her upstairs. Holy Jesus. I, I, I'd say. Bro, Wayne he was Bennett. looking. He was looking. He looked down. He goes, "Yeah, Wayne Bennett. I've got coach here." <laughs> yeah, okay, sorry. Yeah, I saw that. Um, <laughs> no, I, I would go with Wayne Bennett, but I'll let you talk more about that. But that left side obviously has just been incredible this year. Um, Cody Walker is to, to think Cody Walker came third in the Dally M's. Mm. What on earth is that? Like, just shows how good Tom Trevojevic's season has been. Uh, you know, I, I think he's chased down Timmy Smith's record for most tries in a season, which. Like you guys remember 2005 <laughs> Tim Smith was, was a joke, eh? mate what it was incredible and he was doing it in so many different ways I mean Cody Walker you watch all the tries he set up I mean to me they all look exactly the same but they just can't stop him yeah it just it's yeah it's a huge compliment to him um I, I think obviously we mentioned the narrative farewelling gags farewelling Reynolds, Reynolds yeah, farewelling Wayne yeah Wayne I, I reckon they know this is Benji's last game. I wonder if Benji will tell him during the week. Mm. Even if he's not, he might just tell him it is. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's a bit of Wayne witchcraft there. Yeah. He'd do that for sure. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'll go Wayne. Obviously, he's been here plenty of times. He's only lost one, hasn't he? With the Yeah, he, he lost 15 uh, with the Broncos. But then he, he lost 87 as well. He was a co-coach in that one, though. So it was his first ever year of coaching, whether you read into that. Funnily enough, that 87 grand final that he lost... Mm. That's, uh, there was a heat wave in Sydney that week. It was the hottest recorded grand final in history, dare how, I say. How hot was it? I'm not sure how hot it was, but mm. it, dare I say in Brisbane or if this COVID stuff keeps going, if it's in Townsville, I reckon that record will tumble. Mm. Wayne might have a bit of head noise. <laughs> <laughs> well, PTSD and the heat. No, I just, uh, yeah, I just love uh, Wayne Bennett. I love Obviously never been coached by him, but you never hear a bad word about him. And this is what he does, man. He takes teams to finals and hopefully he wins it. And he's got all them older boys. Um, I know he loves he loves an older team, doesn't he? Like them, he, he can get the best out of them. Them dragging the boys were old when he went to Newcastle. They were calling him Oldcastle. So um, yeah, he'll, he'll be digging into the arsenal and pulling out every coaching trick he has, and hopefully just keeps him relaxed because he's going up against some pretty relaxed characters that are super talented. So it's going to be a relaxathon, I reckon. You you see a little who's bit more of that. Rela- who's more relaxed out of the teams? Oh, Penrith, <laughs> Penrith, yeah, kicking I think feet Penrith, up. Yeah. yeah. You just see the I, I think it was a. Um, a Batuta the other day, they said uh, Ivan Cleary has slept 30 minutes since Wayne, <laughs> since Wayne winked at him. Winked at him. <laughs> it's unreal. <laughs> I think with the ageing roster thing, you see a lot of that in like successful US sports like in the NBA. Lakers. Like LeBron always surrounds himself with the veterans, even though we know it's a young man's game and you said it's a, such a fast game now. But like Wayne is a guy who would always love to have like – there's probably better 14s in the game, but he wants Benji. There's probably better front rowers in the game at the moment, but he knows what he's going to get out of mm. Burgess and the like. Mm. So it's an interesting point. Mm. Rolling into weaknesses, Guru. Good luck finding one. Uh, mate, <laughs> for me with South Sydney, I look at them and, you know, they've had this unbelievable season. They've scored a heap of points. It's been the fastest rugby league has probably ever been. Uh, finals being finals, regardless of what sport you're in. Referees tend to put the whistle away a little bit. I think you'll see less six agains. I think we saw that on the weekend. Everyone's complaining that the game's being officiated differently. But, I mean, that happens in every final series. It all tightens up a little bit. It's the reality of it. So, I wonder if South Sydney, one, going up against this great defensive side can get on the front foot. And two, I'm not sure if they'll get the same sort of six again calls that they have tend to get throughout the season as well. Yeah. So, that's the thing that I worry about. 
uh, with South Sydney. Uh, I'd love to say the inexperience of a key guy like Taft, but mate, he just keeps showing up. Doesn't <laughs> yeah, he? gotta stop riding him off, don't we? Yeah. Uh, for me, I, Adam Reynolds' groin. Like yeah. he's a massive part of everything that they do, and um, I know I know Taft kicked well on the weekend, but once like the competition's on the line, the season's on the line, but more so general play kicking as well. Cody Walker kicked really well early on, but after a while, man, you know, once Cody Walker's going to be cook- kicking, unless it's like unless you've got Nathan Cleary and Adam Reynolds kick- kicking, and they're the only kicker, and you know they, they're smart enough to get away with it, and they can get away with it. Um, guys like Cody Walker, they can get away with it for a bit. But there's going to be pressure coming. And does that throw Cody Walker off with the rest of his game? Because Isaiah Yale's chasing after you. Fisher Harris is chasing after you. Once you kick, they're putting you onto the ground. That Does that become like a little bit annoying and uh, fuck up the rest of your play? So I think this how they manage this injury is going to be really, really important. So I'm going Adam Reynolds' groin. Just on that, you obviously mentioned, you know, if he's not 100%, puts a bit of pressure on Cody Walker. Cody Walker arrived uh, to the Rabbitohs with a bit of a smell around him that he couldn't handle the big stages. Yep. Uh, he came from Queensland Cup. He was playing for the East Tigers. Tigers yeah. Yeah, they lost the grand final in 13-14, mm. two years in a row. He was the player of the year in 13, I think it was. And, you know, if, if you buy into the reports, apparently the first thing Wayne Bennett did when he arrived at South was pulled Cody Walker aside and sort of, you know, spoke about this. Yeah. It's a big opportunity for Cody Walker to prove a lot of people wrong. Uh, obviously, he started his career late, but he, you know, I think people forget he spent a year at the Panthers. He was with his brother playing for was Windsor, he? yeah, 2012, 2013, around that mark. And then he went up to Queensland Cup, did really well up there, but left there being player of the year, two-time grand finalist with a tag, can't handle the big stages. So Ooh. big test for Cody. Shit, that's a bit of knowledge for you, isn't there? Seven bucks for Clive Churchill. So if he does, I think if Souths do win and he does stand up, he could be a red hot chance for that too. But weaknesses, ice for on the other side of the ball, mate. I always go for this one with Penrith. They're like your biggest strength, your biggest weakness, Nathan Cleary. Mm. Um, you just know everything's coming through Nathan Cleary. And I know they can disguise a little bit with Curacao and Isaiah Yell, but if you can nullify him in some way, shape or form, everything else falls from underneath him, in my opinion. Obviously, they the, he's been out injured and they just don't look the same. Jerome Lloyd doesn't look the same. Um, Dylan Edwards doesn't look the same Crichton doesn't look the same Their forwards don't look like They have the same punch He is so fucking important to them And if they can nullify him In some way, shape or form Or, or throw him off He's a smart footballer uh, I dare say he'd have a target On his head though So every time he's into the line he end up on the ground He's tough enough to handle that But uh, If they're able to nullify him It's going to be interesting Where to from there For sure And you know He's been carrying this This shoulder injury for a long time You saw him get banged up A couple of weeks ago uh, I think if I'm Wayne Bennett, I'm I'm giving Jaden Sewer a mission. Mm. Just go after Nathan. Yeah, you you gotta you gotta try and get him on the back foot. You're exactly right. Uh, the thing that I worry about with Penrith, and sort of said it before, but was that their grand final last week? Are they going to be able to get up they've, again? Yeah, they've, they've had a weird final series. I mean, it has been a bizarre final series. It Draining is. for them to lose to South Sydney in week one. I think the last time this happened uh, might have been the Tigers and the Cowboys in 05. The Tigers smashed the Cowboys in week one. Mm. But then it was the one versus eight system, and then they ended up playing each other in that grand final. Um, and, of course, the Tigers won that. So, yeah, I, 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 yeah. I, I also wonder, you know, obviously the coaching battle this week. I, I personally thought Wayne Bennett came out with a knockout victory a few weeks ago. Mm. I, I thought he really got Ivan very emotional in that press conference and sort of put him on the back foot. So, um, mate, you got Ivan walking into his what, third grand final week, which is pretty impressive, third in 10 years. Mm. Wayne's walking into his 10th. He, he knows what he's having at grand final breakfast. He's He knows the whole routine. So experience uh, of the coaches could cost them too, but, man, it's hard to find a weakness inside. The, the other thing I would say is that they've scored 28 points this final series. Of those 28 points, only one of those tries hasn't been off a kick. Oh, really? Mm. That's interesting. Brian Toto scored on the weekend where they, where they went through the hands on the left, obviously on the left edge, Brian Toto scored. Uh, that's but weird because you just you associate Penrith with points, don't you? That's, that's it, yeah. yeah. It's been, mate, as you said, it's been a weird... The narrative of the Panthers gets weirder the more you look at it. Mm. It's strange. It's very surreal. Can I chime in with a weakness? Yeah. It's not really my role here, but I've got one. I'd like to ask you, the word is temperament. And it's sort of like based off the back of last year and sort of that opening game against Souths is like my worry with Penrith, I think they're going to win. We will get to predictions later. But my worry with Penrith is when the game gets tight in that last sort of 10 or 15 minutes, if it's not going their way on attack, which it hasn't in this final series, 
they start to lose their heads a little bit. They start to move the ball, push the passes, stuff like that. Is that something that would concern you? Because they seem to, they're very system orientated and they're good at sticking in their shape. But as soon as things aren't going their way, my worry with them is a little bit paramatory. I think they cancel each other out because <laughs> yeah. Souths do exactly the same as well. Yeah, but you just describe Souths. So you need to make <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, I'll yeah. be talking about Souths then. So, um, yeah, they're both the same. So, obviously, when things are going well, they can stack points up pretty quickly um, besides being in the final series right now. But, yeah, I don't know. I just look at like a Roosters in Melbourne. They're so good at regardless they don't lose their heads, whereas I think Penrith tend to chase points a little bit when they... Yeah, that, that comes with time and experience and stuff like that. But you, you, sometimes you have to chase points. You can't – like, if it's not working for 60 minutes, like, you can stick to it. And, and a lot of times they haven't had results from that where they can chase points and get points pretty quickly. So I think they fall back to and what they know. So, yeah, I'm not too sure. I don't have the answer for that. Yeah, yeah, I, I, you know, it sounds really stupid. But I, I think you have got a point that I think both of these teams, they struggle to chase points. Mm. Um, I think Penrith are probably better at it than doing it than South Sydney, to be honest with you. And, you know, as obvious as it sounds, I reckon the team to be leading with 25 to go, it's going to be tough for them to lose. I Whatever reckon. the over-under is, I think it's 38. Take the unders. Unders. Take yeah. the unders. And it's a pretty low unders final. still. Yeah, it's very low, but I'll be taking it. Um, right, Guru, sorry, X Factor, my man. Where are you going on this one? Uh, this is X- a big one. Yeah, X Factor, I think for South Sydney you have to go Cody Walker. I just I think that if they are going to win this game of football – it's got to come through, Cody. Um, there was a try that he scored last weekend where he's he was on the ground. He was on the ground. Yeah, man. that was cool. On the ground and Damien Cook. When Damien Cook gets the ball, I'd look at the wider shot and he he was still on the ground when Damien Cook got the ball. And mm. Cody Walker looks up and he just sees space and he just runs there. He doesn't, I, I, you know, from what I saw on the tape, it's like he wasn't even calling out to Cook or anything. Cook, he just knew this guy will know where the football's going to be and. I mean, we, we, we spoke about it on Instagram the other day. He's just one of those guys that, yes, the ball bounces to him, but he always puts himself in the position. Like, he, he, he's sort of like Matt Bowen and Cliffy Lyons in that Tyrone regard. Peach is the best. Yeah, <laughs> Peach, man. <laughs> Even Preston Campbell before yeah, that. Yeah. Right. Preston he, used to find the footy. Cody just knows where to be when he needs to be there. Um, so I think I think Cody Walker, South Sydney for me. Who's yours from the Bunnies? Um, I was I was saying Cody Walker as well, but I think Cam Murray was probably their best player last week, and just just the way um, he sort of carried them and got them forward as well. So I think he's a big chance at Clive Churchill as well. You want a Cam Murray start? Yeah, get your Tim Foyle hat on. Okay, <laughs> twenty fourteen when the Rabbitohs last won the premiership, Clive Churchill medal that night was Sam Burgess jersey thirteen, obviously. Mm. The premiership before that was nineteen seventy one. So we're talking 50-odd years ago. The lock forward that night was Ron Coote. Now, back then, lock forward wore, wore jersey eight, so it was a different jersey, to be fair, but he was the lock forward, Ron Coote. Uh, he got the Clive Churchill that night. Mm. You know who his coach was? Clive Churchill. Clive Churchill. Yeah, <laughs> he told me that before, so <laughs> I sound a lot smarter than I <laughs> <laughs> But every time South have won a premiership in the last 50 years, it's been the lock forward that's been MOM. I think uh, Cam Murray... He's a mascot boy. He's a junior through and through. I think he's a future captain. You know, we listen to the Melbourne Cup and they start telling him about them stories yeah. before they <laughs> race. <laughs> Cam Murray's giving me the Melbourne Cup vibes. Yeah, I've been in the mountain yard all week. Keeping yeah. an eye on him. <laughs> I, I think he's at about $11 off the top of my head. So He's, he's out to 13 on sports bet. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's yeah Cody Walker's like sort of the obvious one as well, along with Nathan on the other side. Like They influence results. But yeah, something about Cam Murray's just... Sticking out to me right now. What about Penrith? Where are you going? X Factor for this has to be Nath, bro. Has to be. Um, you gonna go the other way? You, you know who I'm going. <laughs> 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 All right, narrative. Here we go. Yeah, no, I I like Abby Curacao in this one. Uh, similar to the South Sydney narrative, Penrith Panthers. They've won two grand finals. Ninety one. Roishi Simmons scored two tries. Funnily enough, he actually didn't get the Clive Churchill that day. Oh, he didn't. Yeah. Do you know who got it? Who? Bradley Clyde on the losing side. Oh, that's happened a couple of times, hasn't it? It has happened well, yeah. Ches, Ches has it, got it. it. Yeah, Ches has got it. Uh, Brad Mackay got it two years after. Mm. Um, Bradley Clyde as well. Uh, and then, of course, 2003, and this is the one that I find creepy. Uh, 2003 Panthers came from nowhere, as we all know. They had one dude that had won a premiership before in that team. It was Luke Prittis. He won it at a different club at the Broncos. 2021 Panthers, they got one guy that's won a premiership. It's Api yeah. Curacao. He won it at a different side. club. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Luke Prittis. One try in that game. I still think it's the most dominant grand final performance by an individual ever, Luke Prittis in 03. Mm -hmm. It was an unreal performance. Uh, He scored a try, got Clive Churchill. So, Api I think he's at 650 for an anytime try there. I don't mind him for the Clive either. If it's not going to be Nath, geez, Api can't be far behind. Yeah. And, I mean, this is one of these games where you mentioned Murray. 
Appy, Cook, Isaiah Yo. If it's 12 10, 12 8, which I don't think it would shock anyone based on the last few weeks, whoever's deciding this medal, they're going to look at stats and all these guys are going to have 50 tackles next to their name. Yeah. Uh, that sort of stuff matters when it comes to a grand final for me. So And all it'll take is, say, like Appy to duck and dive over and maybe put like Isaiah Yo or, or someone short over or Appy or um, Viliami Kiki down the blind side. You know what I mean? That's a try, so that's a try and 50 tackles. Now he was Might cutting up Melbourne last week yep. in the mm-hmm. last 20 far out. I, I, I couldn't believe that they didn't score more points, to be honest with you. Appy was just destroying them. Yeah, he's we've, a freak. We've got a phone in from Justin Horro. Like just on that stat, <laughs> he's throwing one out for the exact reason which you said they could be a sniff he believes Dylan Edwards at 23 bucks could be a sniff based off if it's a tight game and they're looking at numbers Yards. Edwards is going to be consistent he's probably going to he might cross for a try and he's going to run for about 30,000 metres so. fire but if, if um, Reynolds can get under the, if he's kicking Dill mm. can go the other way as well too so it's one of those tricky ones uh, I just reckon with the Dylan Edwards like Scott makes a great point there but there's just there's so many big names and we know that narrative matters we know that who you are matters when it comes to these Clive Churchill medal uh, I, I, I think it'll probably only go to one of three or four guys and they'll be the guys that'll be on the poster before kick off for me it's a good way to look at it I like okay. that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> have you given your X Factor before we roll into predictions yeah sorry oh, oh, I just right. said Nath yeah, I just said, said it had yeah. to be Nath of course all right here it is, Gary. Prediction, mate. You can't be wrong two weeks in a row, so I'm back in oh, I can be, believe me. <laughs> back Where are you in. going? Mate, I, I I can't bet against Penrith's defence. In a, in a competition where there's been more points scored than ever, and I thought we'd transition to offence being more important than defence, they've shown in the last four weeks that defence matters. matters. Yeah. It still matters, man. It's... It's that old, you, you look to the past to mm. find the future sort of thing. Um... Mate, after the week that I've been through driving around South Sydney, seeing all these rabbits, seeing all the community, I, I want South Sydney to win, to be honest with you. But Penrith's defence, I just I can't bet against them. I, this is the sort of game that I probably won't bet on. I'll probably be on the unders and a couple of try scorers. But if I gun to my head right now, I think I'd have to go Penrith 1-12. to I'm so, Yeah, same as me. Uh, I can't oh, – yeah, it's hard to go past Penrith. But I'm same as Guru where I'm, I don't care who wins this one. I'm happy to enjoy this as a pure spectator. Much like him, I'll just get on random bets here and there. Um, yeah, I reckon Penrith. Give Betting us, against give us a score. Would, love to, would love to see South yeah. win. Um, yep. Yeah. Going low, I'm going low. 14-10. Is that what you got? Yeah. But no one's going to believe me now. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to steal it off his notes too. <laughs> <Yeah>. so. <laughs> I've got 14-10. I've added a bit of... Sp- Pepper to it. I've got a scoreless second half. I'm going 40 What's 10 that? at the half. Is that scoreless pain? second half? Yeah, you can you can bet you can on no tries around. in the second yeah. half, and it's oh, going to be a cool. lot. So there you go. That's also my best bet before we get into your best bets, Isaac. I don't. I'm, I'm taking mine away. I don't. I don't like my bet anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what was mind. it? What was it? No, nah, I've gone pin off to win, and then AJ. To sc- I reckon Souths will start faster, yeah. and I reckon AJ will score first, and then pin off to win. So I was paying 18 25, mm. but I might I might throw a bit of money on Cat Murray, Clive Churchill. Yeah, I'll Good. be I'll be on all these narratives. I'll be on uh, Cam Murray. Happy. I'll be on Happy. I'll yeah. be on Happy to score Benji a try. Too. <laughs> Benji. Mate, Benji Marshall. Um, I mean, if if he comes on in this game with thirty minutes to go and it's tight and he's the difference, mm. can he get a Clive Churchill this weekend? Can it happen? I mean, I, I, if you would have said to me in any other grand final ever, a bench player is going to win the Clive Churchill, I would said you're off your head. Mm. But Benji. He's got the narrative. It's the farewell. It's a different game now. It's a different game. I, you know, he, he came on in, in that game, and, and yes, they, they, they were giving it to Manly, but geez, he had some nice touches. That try that he, I think he threw it to Campbell Graham, where he sort of, mm. he, he looked long, he played short, and he just, he's just the king of playing slow now, and which he never, he was never like that when he was young. Everything was a hundred miles an hour, flicks, steps. And the good thing about that, when you, because. When they attack on their try line, you're not trying to like go into the line. So you yep. wait for the line to come to you, and he get, obviously he's got that pass selection of doing where he can hit anyone. Yeah. So you, can you talk about tempo a lot with that, right? Like they throw their three halves and their now fullback. That's three different tempos because Benji comes on and plays so slow yep. and so deep. Whereas you got Cody Walker who's flat a million miles an hour. And too. the good, good thing about it when Benji comes on, so say Adam Reynolds can hold a wide four as yep. well, so he doesn't have to swing over here and dig into the line where Benji or Cam Murray can do that. But then you also got Cam Murray outside Benji who can generate quick play the balls, which helps the rest of selves as well. So, so many options. They just got to get their fair look of chances to be honest and execute on a couple of them. And probably Cody Walker is good enough to strip them apart. 
Man, I hate betting against Wayne Bennett. I hate betting against Wayne Bennett on a Friday, on a Sunday grand final day. <laughs> it's far <laughs> what's, what's out. What's Gagai playing? He, I, I can see him getting a double. Two or more for Gagai? Two or more. What's he playing Clive Churchill? Oh. Just, sin- 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 J- Clive J- just Churchill while you're there. finding that, is this potentially the best grand final matchup of defensive centres of all time? I reckon these four are unreal. Between Gagai and Campbell Graham, their defense is sensational. Who did um, Who did Dragons beat twenty? Oh, they were going up against Parramatta, right? Eh? Ah, yeah, because you wouldn't go past Gaznier and Cooper as defensive centers. No, nah, no, nah, yeah, they'd be a good shout. But uh, Gagai, yeah. Gag, sorry, mate, Gagai's at sixty-seven dollars for Clive Churchill. Ooh, but a jam for you guys there. <laughs> I can see him getting a double. Can you? Do you know what? You, you could look through all these guys and just start making up random fucking stories and go. Oh, do you know? What? I can see that happening. Yeah, Campbell. Uh, I was having a look through the Clive. You know. History the other day. Never a centre? I don't think a centre's won it. I'm trying to... I'm scrambling here, but I don't think a centre has Everything's won it. Everything's unprecedented until it happens, man. Yeah, yeah that's it. Um, I, I think that there, there's been about five or six lock forwards. Obviously, a heap of halves, heaps of sixes. There's only ever been two hookers that have won it, funnily mm. enough. Mm. Appy and uh, Sean Berrigan, who was a centre six weeks before he won the Clive at another Wayne. So Gagai can great. play hooker. If Gagai moves <laughs> to nine, we're on. <laughs> All right, uh, before we go, boys, we've got a few fan questions that we'll just bang through here. Ice, we'll start with you on this one. Thoughts on Tavita Bangai Jr. ruling himself out through injury? Mature. Such a mature decision. Um, got a young kid there, ready to go. Let him let him through. Obviously, he's been awesome, new to yeah, Spencer Lanier. I think, like, you look at Quaid, like how much he's grown over the past couple of years. I think TPJ's in that same mould, and I know they're boys, and um, we got Sonny in there. They'll just be talking about, oh, it's better to give the experience to someone else and not ride or die on it. So just mature for me. Tavita's made more team based more team based decisions in the last six weeks than his entire career before this six weeks, mm. I reckon. I, I always thought he um he had some selfish football in him. He, you know, obviously had a couple of brain explosions up there in Brisbane. But the way that he's matured since arriving at Penrith, and I'll be honest with you, I'll take my licks on this one too. When Penrith signed him, I sort of went, ugh. I don't know if this is the guy to bring into this system coming yeah. into finals just based on his history. But well, I've just said he needs to fit in, eh? Like yep. he just goes, no, he just needs to fit into the system. That's it. He doesn't have to try and do anything else. And mate, that's the thing. Like he used to come on for Brisbane and try and throw fifteen offloads and turn the ball over. He hasn't done that for Penrith. He's just owned his role. Mm. And credit to him this week. I mean, that's that have to be one of the hardest decisions in your life, wouldn't it? Turning down. I've, I think he's had some life experiences going recently, yeah. so I think well, that puts things into play pretty quickly. Like as, as much as we love football and grand finals, it's, bro, it's a game of footy, to be honest. So, be nice though. Oh, but, well, <laughs> mate, and, and the guy that's replaced him, Spencer Lenu, when he played last week, when he came on, he was sensational. Mm. Some of the carries he had were great. He really had Melbourne on the back foot. They get Leota back this week. Who, I um, mean, we talk about Dylan Edwards as the most underrated guy on this side. Leota can't be far behind him. Yeah. Very underappreciated. It obviously stands next to James Fisher Harris, so doesn't get the compliments. But Leota's a great footballer too. I was almost about to go far. They're juniors. They care about Penrith, but so does self. Say, so. yeah. <laughs> I think the other guy we haven't talked about is um, Scotty Sorensen. Uh, he, I played with Scotty. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, he was at Canberra when I was there, so he played for Mounties when I was there. Like he was our best player. Well, I'm pretty sure after he was at Mounties, he went to South for a year, or maybe it was before. But he was at South Sydney for a year, and mate, they didn't even give him a look in. They mm. didn't even consider him. So, you know, he, he's a um, Cronulla Sharks junior who the Sharks have let go of twice. So he's had to go the long way around, uh, and he'd be playing for fuck all there too. Yeah, and mate, but, he potentially, you know, arguably won the game for them. On Sunday, that, that that chase down that he made on Jerome Hughes, he's quick, bro. He's yeah, quick. he was. That was trucking. surprising. I didn't know he could scoot like nah, that. No, he's rapid. He's rapid. It's for a big guy too. It's not the like prettiest run, but he covers ground. He's the prettiest bloke, though. Yeah, good looking rooster, yeah. and a and a nice cunt too, which is kind of annoying. Dangerous combo. <laughs> uh, that question, sorry, was from Richie Fioso. So thanks for that, Richie. Not Richie. What did I say? Jeffrey Fioso. Oh, Richie Fioso. <laughs> I'm excited there. I was like, yeah, sorry. Um, this isn't a question. Someone just says, "Can no question, can you punch Jordan Simi for me? We'll do. Uh, here we go. From Penrith's tough finals run, are they going to be battle-hardened or fatigued? Guru, we'll start with you here. That is from Lee Solly. Uh, last week I said fatigued. They were battle-hardened. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm starting to lean towards battle-hardened. Um, but I think that'll be a question we can answer on Sunday night at <laughs> 10 o'clock, realistically. Yeah, same as me. Flip the coin. Um, I, I think they're better hardened. Um, but I think they got youth on their side, which helps, and they got confidence as well. So they'll be rolling off the back of these three wins going, fuck, let's go. 
Yeah. Dylan Brettel asks, Ice, if you had to be part of either Souths or Penrith throughout the season and grand final, who would it be and why? I'll go Penrith just because I've been there before. Um, and seeing the evolution of to get the new performance center and like seeing Nathan at his kids, it'd just be interesting to be around, wouldn't it? See the, see the evolution of Ivan as a coach, um, and sort of the back staff as well. Like a yeah. lot of these guys don't get credit. Like Alan Mears has been there for like years. He does the strapping, and hopefully those guys. He he, he actually got a West Tigers um, grand final tattoo <laughs> at, at the start of. Um, West Tigers in 2011 when they were meant to win it. Yeah. He got an early tattoo. So he's one of those guys that people love. So I'm not too sure if he's still there anymore, but I think that it matters to the area as well, especially Penrith. Yeah, I think being a Penrith be unreal. I also think being in this South Sydney team would be sensational. Mm. Imagine being a young bloke and Benji Marshall walking in with Cody Walker, Reynolds, Sick. Wayne Bennett. Like, um, yeah, I, I think to be in either of these squads would be an unbelievable story. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buck the trend. I'm going to go South Sydney. I think I'd rather be in grand final week with Wayne Bennett and Benji Marshall, just to experience that. Mm. I feel like these um, Penrith boys will party harder after, afterwards too. Be partying with would, they have, would they have the piss stamina of the South boys though? Yeah, they're from out west. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing. You know these Penrith boys, when they eventually do go back to Sydney, they're going to be partying on the streets yeah, with the fans. Nice. Yeah. Fireworks going, <laughs> cops cruising around, yeah. guys doing wheelies on motorbikes. It'd be cool. Um, I'd go the Warriors. Right. Uh, <laughs> Jake Bramble asks... Will Penrith's loss throw them? Will Penrith last year loss throw them off? I suppose that's a mental question. Uh, go I'd say finals, no, pass. I reckon. But I reckon if they lose this one, head noise. Fuck, it's an interesting couple of years coming up. Obviously, all the boys are better players. They're worth more money. Do they start looking elsewhere? I reckon they'll be. It won't be as rattled by it as people think. But if they lose this one, it could be interesting. I think if they are playing Melbourne. In the grand final, yeah, different story. Mm. I think now that they've conquered Melbourne, I mean, mate, the the, the sell it like obviously when you make a grand final, everyone celebrates. But mate, the look on Jerome Luai's face when he went down with that ball against Melbourne the other day, I don't know, it just g- gave me a little tingle like they've they've turned the corner sort of thing. They'd do that in round two though, then boys. Oh, for sure, but I don't <laughs> know, the intensity of it just and I mean like they've been waiting for that for twelve months now. Um, that's the other thing with Nathan Cleary. That's the first time he's played Melbourne since that grand final. Mm. So for him to get that win oh, there, yeah, They're always sort of missing eh, those games yeah. all, the, all the stars and that That's annoying. Last question This one comes from Bodhi One Kenobi We sort of spoke about this yesterday It's a bit of an off grand final topic But should Australia and New Zealand Name paper teams after the GF Even though they don't have test matches As a nod to the boys Oh yeah Why not Doesn't hurt anyone It's good uh-huh. content Yeah what, what, do you, what do you do after the rugby league season? <laughs> yeah <laughs> Gosh, It's a grim time <laughs> Don't worry about that no, I do a heap of content. I just make shit up to talk about, get guests on, whatever it might be. I'll still be going, don't you worry about that. Narratives. Narratives. All so right, I think that'll do it, Ice. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Happy birthday, Guru. Thanks, brother.